Hello everyone. Today's lecture and video presentation is on the techniques and application of gingival retraction in our practice. As this technique plays a pivotal role in ensuring precision in success of fixed partial dentures and restorative procedures. Uh, gingival retraction is a crucial aspect of various dental procedures, especially in the field of prosthodontics and restorative dentistry. So here are the few uh, specific learning objectives focusing on gingival retraction. To identify and describe the different components of gingival tissues, including the free gingiva, attached gingiva and the interdental papilla. Recognize the variations in gingival anatomy in different areas of the oral cavity. Determine whether gingival retraction is indicated in dental procedures such as crown and bit preparations and restorative dentistry. Recognize situations where gingival retraction may be contraindicated and understand alternative approaches. Explore different gingival retraction techniques including chemical methods and mechanical methods. Demonstrate the proper application of gingival retraction techniques in a simulated clinical setting. Uh, as we know that gingiva is attached to the surface of the tooth, we need to displace the gingiva away from the tooth. One is to evaluate the margins during a tooth preparation and second so that the impression material flows into the sulcus and it is recorded in the impression. So gingival displacement is the process of deflecting the marginal gingiva away from the tooth uh, and also it can be defined as the process of exposing the margins when making the impressions of the prepared tooth. Once the tooth preparation is done and the margins are prepared, our job doesn't end here. We need to think beyond the finish line. So what is the importance of mastering the retraction techniques in our practice? So we can achieve the following clinical outcomes. Uh, one is accurate impressions, improved marginal adaptations of the restorations and control of hemorrhage. So uh, if we take a closer look at the impression, we can see how well the margins have been recorded. This improved marginal adaptation of the restoration post cementation and also this control of hemorrhage when we record an impression. Uh, also assessing clinical and radiographic information during gingival retraction is crucial in various dental procedures uh, because clinical examination of the soft tissues helps in evaluating the health of the gingival tissues. It is essential to ensure that the retraction doesn't cause excessive trauma or damage to the surrounding tissues. Radiographs can assist in assessing the bone level and ensuring that the retraction doesn't compromise the underlying bone structure. So what are the things that we assess clinically as we retract the gingiva? So clinically the gingival tissues intended to be retracted, it should be pink and pink in color and firm. The gingival biotype should be identified which is a useful indicator of the behavior of the gingiva to operative procedures and the gingival displacement. The contour and consistency and any pain originating from the gingiva or supporting tissue should be evaluated. There should be minimum or no bleeding on probing. And also radiographs are a very important parameter in assessing the bone levels. So both periapical and bite wing radiographs can be utilized to assess the interproximal bone level and the crystal bone height as well as infra bony pockets and bone loss. Uh, the next important uh, uh, chair side technique that we need to uh, know is assessing the gingival sulcus. Now gingival sulcus is an important parameter to assess the placement of the restorative margins. Now if we place the margins too deep into the sulcus which means that we require more retraction of the gingival tissues resulting in damage to the surrounding structures of the tooth. So if the margins are to be placed subgingivally, it is recommended to place the margins 0.5 to 1 mm below the gingival margin, especially where the probing depth is less than 1.5 mm. The optimum position of the margin is 0.5 mm from the healthy free gingival margin or 3 to 4 mm from the crest of the alveolar bone. Uh, so what are the different methods of retracting the gingiva? We have mechanical methods, chemico-mechanical methods, surgical methods and cordless methods. So uh, in a clinical setting, uh, all the techniques can be followed but chemico-mechanical is the most common technique that we use in our clinical practice. Uh, so what are the mechanical methods? These techniques involve physically retracting and displacing the soft tissues, making space for the impression material to reach the recess of the subgingival preparation as well as providing hemostasis following the following three techniques can be used. One is impression material filled with copper band and tube, rubber dam and anatomic retraction caps. In the copper band method, this method involves the use of copper band or ring. The copper band is filled with modeling compound or elastomeric impression material and seated on the prepared tooth along the path of insertion. This method physically displaces the tissue 
which stays retracted when the copper band is removed so that the subsequent impression records the subgingival two structures. Uh, now use of rubber dam is not only an asset in preparing the tooth but also when the impression is made. The use of heavy, extra heavy or a specially heavy rubber dam together with specialized clamps help to retract and protect the gingival tissue during preparation of the tooth as well as providing isolation for subsequent restorative placement. Uh, anatomic retraction caps, they follow the same principle of the rubber band except that they are pre-shaped for easy placement between the adjacent teeth and once in place the patient bites on it, the physical pressure arrests the hemorrhage and opens the sulcus for the final impression. Uh, so, uh, coming next to chemical mechanical methods, now the mechanical aspect involves placement of a cord into the gingival sulcus to displace the tissues. The chemical aspect involves treatment of the cord with one or more number of chemical compounds that will, in, uh, that will induce one temporary shrinkage of the tissues and two control of hemorrhage and fluid seepage. So what is a retraction cord? Uh, retraction cord is a mechanical or a chemical me mechanical method of displacing the gingiva. These are made up of cotton or polyester which are braided or twisted or knitted together to form a cord. Uh, they are considered to be the most popular method for displacement of the gingival tissues. Now according to the fabrication they can be either knitted, twisted or braided and also they can be classified as impregnated or non-impregnated. Any configuration of the cord can be used according to the clinician's preference. Now the braided cords have a tight weave and hence are easier to place onto the gingival sulcus without the fear of fraying. They also have good absorbency if used with medicines. So braided cords are most preferred as it holds more moisture because of its configuration. Uh, so we can classify retraction cords according to their configuration, according to the surface finish, according to the chemical treatment and according to the thickness. Uh, it can be classified either as plain, knitted or twisted or according to the surface finished as waxed or unwaxed. According to the chemical treatment, they can be either plain or impregnated. And according to the thickness, it can be triple zero, double zero or zero, triple zero being the thinnest and zero being the thickest. Uh, now there are two broadly used techniques for packing the retraction cord in the gingival sulcus depending on the clinical situation and health of the gingival tissue. The depth of the gingival sulcus and placement of the margin of the preparation on the tooth structure will determine the technique for uh, the gingival displacement. So uh, among the techniques that we use, it, there are three techniques, single cord techniques, double cord techniques and infusion technique of gingival displacement. Uh, now, a single cord technique, it's a relatively straightforward method, usually employed for a single teeth. Uh, when healthy gingival tissues and a single piece of retraction cord is placed into the gingival sulcus, followed by removal after adequate gingival displacement has been achieved. The impression of the tooth preparation margins can be made. It is useful technique when there is little or no hemorrhage from the gingival sulcus as the preparation margins on the tooth are either gingival or slightly subgingival. Uh, now, double cord technique, as the name indicates, two retraction cords are placed in gingival sulcus, which is too deep to be sufficiently displaced uh, with a single cord or where the tissues would collapse with the use of a single cord. So the technique describes placing a smaller diameter cord soaked with a hemostatic agent into the depth of the sulcus, causing some lateral tissue displacement, but primarily controlling hemorrhage, the larger diameter cord is then packed into the sulcus. So what are the instruments we require chairside for retracting the gingiva chemical mechanically? So we need a mouth mirror and a probe, a dappen dish, pizza, scissor, hemostatic agent, gingival cord pack, it, uh, gingival cord packer, it can be either serrated or non-serrated and the gingival retraction cords, it can be either triple zero, double zero or zero. Uh, now, uh, having a choice for the cord packer, it can be either serrated or non-serrated, it can be either round or oval. Serrated round is better as per convenience of placing the cord. Now, having an insight into various techniques on gingival retraction in our previous slides, here is a video demonstration of gingival retraction in a clinical setting. So, these are the following instruments that we require. So the first thing that we need to do uh, clinically is to assess the depth of the sulcus and we need to probe into the sulcus. So uh, when we probe what we can see here is there is a very, uh, the gingival attachment is very thin and there is, uh, we can see some amount of bleeding in the 
uh, sulcus so we are going to use a hemostatic agent and along with the knitted retraction cord which is non impregnated uh, so if we are retracting a single tooth uh, sufficient amount of cord is taken uh, uh, after which it is impregnated with the hemostatic agent we dip the retraction cord with the hemostatic agent Once it sufficiently absorbs the hemostatic agent, we place it around the tooth with the help of a tweezer. And then with the help of a cord packer, we start packing the cord into the sulcus. So we start interproximally onto the buccal aspect. We move to the interproximal side The angulation of the cord is very uh, the angulation of the cord packer is very important we place it along the long axis of the tooth and we start gently packing the cord into the sulcus so we move interproximally buccally and then on to the other interproximal side. So here we have started from the distal side and we moved on to the mesial side. So once we have packed on the buccal side, we go on to pack on to the lingual side. We can see here that there is sufficient amount of uh, shrinkage that is achieved here. The gingiva has shied away from the tooth, the margins are exposed and also uh, there is considerable uh, or we can say that there is no uh, uh, bleeding at all as we demonstrated in the initial uh, video, we could see some bleeding there. But now we can see that there is no bleeding and the margins are open. We leave it in the sulcus for at least 10 minutes before we make an impression. Uh, the in, uh, now the next technique that we can use is an infusion technique where first we infuse the uh, uh, gingival sulcus with the hemostatic agent and then we place the cord. So the infusion technique is a specifically designed, uh, in this technique what we use is a specifically designed dento infuser with a small tip containing a ferric, ferric sulphate medicament. So before the impression is made, the brush ended tip is useful in burnishing motion is used in a burnishing motion inside the sulcus, gently extruding the medicament while encircling the tooth. Once hemostasis is achieved, a knitted retraction cord can be packed inside the gingival sulcus. Uh, there are also some surgical methods to retract the gingiva. Uh, surgical methods, some of the methods utilized to improve the visualization of the prepared margin of the tooth, uh, they are not true retraction techniques. This is because they actually remove some part of all the or all the O-line gingival tissues in order to expose the finished line of the preparation or to control hemorrhage. So this technique is more invasive and it should be used only in cases where there is sufficient amount of attached gingiva, not a routine practice in a clinical setting. Uh, as there is increased demand in more efficient and patient friendly methods, cordless retraction techniques are the recent advances in gingival retraction. So these materials used for cordless retraction techniques, they are available as paste, foam or gel. They have the advantage of being non-traumatic to the gingival tissue during displacement. So uh, among the materials that are available in the market, the three most popular uh, materials that are available are Magical Foam Cord, Expacil and Gingitrac. Uh, now Magic Foam is based on polyvinyl siloxin with the ability to expand and displace the tissues once placed inside the gingival sulcus. This is used in combination with the compression cap which the patient bites on followed by removable removal of the assembly and considerable amount of retraction can be achieved. Uh, Expacil is a viscous synthetic paste which consists of 10% aluminium chloride, 80% kaolin with water and modifiers. The kaolin gives the material its physical properties and paste like consistency to help physically displace the gingival tissue while the aluminium chloride acts as a hemostatic agent to control hemorrhage. Uh, Gingitrac, this product comes in combination with foamic cylinders to encircle the tooth. 
the cylinders are available in large and regular sizes. The technique involves the use of polyvinyl siloxin paste to be inserted in the gingival sulcus. This is followed by placing the foamic cylinder filled with more of the retraction paste onto the tooth and directing the patient to exert a biting pressure for 3 to 5 minutes. Now, as there are potential challenges associated with retraction, here are the some of the following clinical tips. Now, the tissues must be displaced gently but with sufficient firmness to place the cord apical to the margins. Overpacking should be avoided because it could cause tearing of the gingival attachment. Repeated use of the cord in the same sulcus should be avoided because it can cause the recession. Start the packing in the interproximal area because it can be placed there easily. So, in conclusion, gingival retraction is a crucial step in various dental procedures impacting the accuracy and success of restorative work. A thorough clinical assessment is essential to tailor the choice of retraction technique based on individual patient characteristics. The evolution of the techniques include recent technological advances and has significantly improved the precision and patient experience in gingival retraction procedures. Thank you everyone for joining today's lecture. Have a good day.